seven, eight-year-olds with tits. They got little boobies. They're eight, and they got breasts. And I'm just talking about the boys here. Because they... For them, gravy is a beverage. There's no topic too delicate for this comedian. Hi, I'm Veronica with Vlachmojo.com, and today I'm speaking with... A guy who likes to masturbate. You're known for your dirty comedy, but recently you proved that you can succeed with clean material. Tell us about the Bill Cosby Show. I opened for Cosby, and uh, I got a standing O, my first standing O in English, with all clean material, which was weird. I realize I'm funnier when I don't swear, I think. I was doing a fundraiser, after the fundraiser, kind of drunk, and I got into a fight. And they were freaking out, saying it was because of the alcohol, but seriously, it wasn't because of the alcohol, it was the other guy's fault. The other guy was a asshole. He was, I didn't do anything to him, didn't even look at him. Guy comes up to me, steps on my foot with his wheelchair. He was really... <laughs> Is there anything that you won't say on stage? If I think it's funny, I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, if I really like it, I'll try it again. But generally, if it doesn't work, I'll stop doing it. But sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll write some stuff. Like, I have a friend that's in a wheelchair that I used to tease him a lot, I'd like do handicap jokes, and he'd laugh. And then whenever I do those jokes on stage, people would be like, freeze and they, they'd feel sort of bad and I was like no no this is funny and someone in a wheelchair thought it was funny so I tried again and again and again and finally found a way to make it work so that's I'm, I'm happy I like pushing things like as far as I can go without getting arrested one guy's name is Dennis he's the most handicapped person I've ever seen in my life and he's really impressive to watch because I you know some days I feel down he's always in a good mood and he's paralyzed from the neck down so nothing on his body works. Nothing. You touch him, he doesn't know. He gets stabbed. He'll find out on the news later that night. Now you've actually received death threats. How do you handle that? Because this is supposed to be comedy. Yeah, I know. It was a joke I did about Revenue Quebec, but it was just, uh, it got taken out of context in the media. And uh, I live like out in the country, and I had people standing in front of my house waiting for me. Like every day when I go out, they were standing there, and that was weird. Now you perform both in French and English. What's the difference between the two crowds? In English, uh, jokes about religion don't go go over as well. For some reason, in Quebec, uh, Quebec, the the French part of Quebec is pretty uh, atheist, so uh, jokes about religion will go over better. But French crowds are are for pretty much everything else are easier to shock because English crowds have had like you know, uh, Lenny Bruce in the old days and, you know, Richard Pryor. And there's been like a million comics, you know, pushing the envelope for years. So they're used to it. Whereas French crowds aren't used to it yet. My dad never hit me, never laid a finger on me, but I didn't know he wasn't allowed to hit me. So whenever he used to raise his voice, he used to scare the hell out of me. He'd raise his voice, I'd shut up and I'd listen. But it isn't like that anymore. Like nowadays you raise your voice and your kid's like, you can't hit me, I'm seven. If you hit me, I'm gonna call child services. If ever your kid tells you that, hire another seven year old to beat the out of them. Now I don't know this story, but your agent told me to ask you about the London crowd. I was in London uh, last winter and I did some shows and they went really, really well. And I did one show that a woman, I was doing jokes about uh, my, my friend in a wheelchair, and this woman, for some reason, started yelling that I was racist. You're racist, you're racist. And then I tried to explain that it's not a race, but she was yelling, yell, and she was yelling so much that like other people in the audience started yelling too, and then they were like, half the crowd really liked me because I was like getting this crazy woman riled up, but half the crowd was with like the crazy woman, so. Half the crowd left the show and waited for me outside. So when I finished, like there were two owners. One of them told me, he said, you have to leave now. He said, we have a cab waiting for you outside. Go and leave. And the other guy, the other owner came up to me and he was like, that's crazy. That's amazing that some guy wants to kill you outside. He was like really happy. He was like, let's get drunk. I was doing a fundraiser for the Special Olympics and I did that joke and they went crazy because they're retarded and they laugh at anything. What's the craziest thing a fan has ever done for you? I had one guy that tattooed my face on his ass, which was really weird, like it was weird. Because he told me, he came up to me and he said, I have a tattoo of your face on my ass. And I just laughed because I thought that was kind of funny. And then he showed me his ass and he actually had my face 
which was weird. But it, like I was happy, but just it, it was weird. Well, thanks. It was great having you. Thank you.